Hello everybody, welcome back to the Osport Cup 2021 round of 32. We have our next match ready in the pipeline, ready to go. Sweden versus the Netherlands. Joining me on the uh, on the Casty Couch is uh, it's it's good old Dio. How Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here, Demarche. It's our first cast together on the World Cup. Both the new casters in for this one for uh, for the year. So I'm happy to be here. I, I think this is an interesting matchup. We've got a couple different teams who I think have relatively similar overall skill sets between the two of them. Uh, I think that both of these teams are likely going to prefer some similar types of maps, which always makes it interesting. It, you know, helps to sort of talk about exactly what these teams are good and bad at and why it seems like they're probably both going to be picking into a lot of the mechanics because honestly that's where both of these teams really did shine in qualifiers the hard rocks the double times those mechanics no mods yeah it can really make for some interesting matchups um but it also it also makes me wonder about the the rest of the pool you know if they're both picking the same maps and they have these really close ones it's going to come down perhaps to those those teams that have got the better all-rounder squads in in some of the stuff they're not as strong on um you know which based on the seeding does favor sweden slightly um but again those toss-up maps if they you know if they go netherlands way they'll be in a very good position um when those those map picks start to run out but again such amazing talent within these squads you know the, the sweden squad it seems to improve every single year that we see them and you know again they've put together an amazing lineup yeah, so let's, let's talk a little bit about both of these lineups i know that we're uh in the process of getting everything ready to go for the match so we can we got a little bit of time to talk about the matchup uh just a little bit more in depth on the red side is Sweden. Saika, their captain, Couch, Blue, Masta, Silla, Reedcat, Andros, and Yageko. And this is this is a team that I, I think a lot of people would say that you know multiple of these members are good at hidden or good at reading. But I, I think when it comes to fielding a four-man roster, they're very strong on the hard rocks and double times. And it's honestly a little bit similar for the Netherlands. Skyravania, Vivellium, Jackie Lamb, Maniva, Luciano, also known as Opep, Cosmic Wolf, Dolter, and Kushper. Uh, both of those teams had their highest scores on that DT2 map in the qualifiers, had some other fantastic scores on Hard Rock 1, DT1 as well. So uh, I think when you're looking at the when you're looking at the picks and bands, then it becomes, like you said, Demarsh, who has that slightly more well-rounded roster? Well, it is Sweden who has those other players who can go in for some of those reading picks, some of the more technical picks, and still put up the same types of scores that you see on those mechanics-based maps as well. Yeah, no, definitely agreed. Um, and, yeah, look, looking at this, this Netherlands lineup, you know... I'm looking at Skyravania, Viviliam, you know, they are they are such good core players of this team. You know, they they really do bring it home and if they if they can keep up with you know some of these Sweden players, they will give them a run for their money. Um this could turn out very interesting. Um this <laughs> this might ruin people's pickums. Um yeah, we those... see we see oh sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, those those two players in particular, I, I think, are basically in for every map for the Netherlands. Like you said, I think that those two are really the ones to look out for. And then you also got players like Jackie Lamb, who are just really, really solid on a lot of these reading picks all throughout the years. Dolter as well, I think, is a very solid addition to the hidden roster for the Netherlands. So we'll, we'll have to see if any of that does come through. We do see the hidden two ban out from the Netherlands and the Nomad 1 ban out from sweden i'm a little bit interested as to why it's no mod one instead of something that they're you know maybe a little uncomfortable on but when you are a higher seeded team when you are facing off against the lower seeded team especially in round of 32 a lot of teams consider no mod one as a little bit rng uh or you know not quite as consistent of a pick compared to some of the other ones and so 
if you are feeling a little shaky, if you are feeling maybe a little nerves across the team, banning out something like the Nomad one is a really solid way to get rid of that chance of a break point on a pick that you know you might otherwise want to go for against some of these other uh, teams in the tournament. Yeah, I think it's about you know isolating some of those um, some of those Netherlands picks. They're a bit more of a toss up. You know, it could go either way. Um, you know, just limiting their options in what they can go for. Um, which, if this match gets to late game, like I think it possibly could, um, it will probably serve Sweden benefits. A very good ban from them. Um, hidden two is very obvious. You know, I think they they have got some good hidden two players, but. I just don't think they can necessarily pull it together all on one run. Um, and when you've got players who will just carry on the side of Sweden, like Reed Cat, um, you know, or Scylla in particular, can be very dangerous on a hidden two. Um, but looks like we're going to be getting into the first map here. Nomad 3 looks to be the first pick. And uh, this is interesting um, from Sweden. An interesting first pick. I think that this is where, you know, some of that more well-roundedness that you were talking about, DeMarv, comes into play. And in terms of why they go for this type of map compared to one of the more mechanics-based picks that might be a bit of a toss-up between the two teams, something like DT1, DT2, right? Uh, this type of map, low BPM aim control, really focused on lots of those high spacing, low BPM alt patterns with a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of cut stream patterning, a little bit of linear stuff mixed in there. And when you're comparing the scores on the equivalent Nomad 3 and qualifiers, it becomes pretty clear why Sweden picked this. The core members on this map, Scylla and Reedcat, both full comboing on the run that was counted for them. Uh, meanwhile, for the Netherlands, they did have two runs that were you know, you've got some high scores from a couple players, but a few players that really aren't quite as comfortable on the map as those players from the Swedish lineup. So I think that this makes quite a lot of sense from Sweden as a first pick, given those types of scores, and uh, definitely shows that Scylla and Reed Cat are ready to play the game right now. We do have Co Couch and Masta in as well from the Swedish lineup, Manivat, Vivalium, Dolter, and Kushper in for the Netherlands. And I, th I think as well with this Nomad 3, you know, the the actual map patterns, they're not as complex as I think they were in the qualifiers. You know, it's all about that consistency focus, which, you know, might play into Netherlands strengths. They're good on maps like Nomad 1. Um, so maybe it might benefit them that they're not as, compli oh, sorry, as complex uh, against the Swedish side. But we do see some early breaks coming in from Dolter in Viviliam, which isn't a good sign for Netherlands going into this. And just for context, this is the same lineup that the Netherlands ran when they were in qualifiers on the alt pick there. So not any surprises at all for the roster from the Netherlands. Uh, I believe Masta actually did not play the alt pick for Team Sweden during qualifiers, so this is a little bit of a surprise to see him in. Uh, definitely a very capable player, had really solid scores on a lot of other picks, and you know, if you are looking for a little bit of variety in the lineup, if one of your players just isn't quite comfortable, it helps to have somebody who can fill in like that. As we get into the first PI though, still the four-way full combo for Team Sweden, the Netherlands with a good recovery, but there goes Kushper's combo as I say that, so. A little bit of a deficit to make up now for the Netherlands. They're going to have to hold on for quite some time. And this map is about that consistency. When you're finding these early breaks on a map that is this long, it becomes much harder to amass a huge score over a long period of time in the map. We are only a third of the way through, so there is time to build that combo back up. But there's so much buildup that needs to happen. There goes Couch for Sweden, so there is some light shining in the distance for the Netherlands right now. This combo's recovering, but there goes Maniva. Another big combo gone for the Netherlands. And that's going to just allow Sweden. They're going to be building this score back up once again. It did start once Couch had that break, but yeah, they're going to start edging it in their favor as they're still holding on to the three full combos in Master, Scylla, and Reed Cat. But the Netherlands could still be in this, but it's going to be down to Sweden holding on to these combos. Very in 
Ganks on that second Ki now. And there goes Filter's combo alongside Kushbird, by the way. Both of them dropping down for the Netherlands. It's just Vivellium left standing alone against these three full combos from Team Sweden. And this is really why this is the first pick for Team Sweden, right? Absolute comfort on the pick for three out of four members. Even Couch, fantastic recovery on the pick. And there goes Vivellium's score as well, so... Uh, this is just a one-sided affair at this point. Really solid first pick from Team Sweden, and, you know, an unexpected result given the qualifier scores, so Netherlands, no reason to feel sad about losing this pick. They've got their own first pick next up to try and take the point back. Yeah, I think it it was always, always going to be a tough ask to try and take Sweden on this map, so they probably weren't thinking too much about this. Um... But yeah, excellent accuracies across Sweden. Um, you know, actually very decent accuracies from Netherlands, apart from just, you know, in terms of comfort, Sweden is just that much better on this Nomad 3. As we see Couch lose that recovery as he does find a break, but his teammates are there for him, falling through. There goes Scylla as well, dropping another full combo, so it's not going to be the three-way, but... I mean, there's no chance for Netherlands to come back into this at this point, unfortunately for them. Solid double FC coming out of Masta and Reedcat on the side of Team Sweden. That is a fantastic team score. And kind of what you expect from a team that, again, had, you know, multiple super high scores during the qualifiers on Nomad 3 from those very two same players from Masta and Reedcat. Uh, Scylla as well, 850k on this one. So very, very solid score there. Couch the Phil player still putting up a respectable 500k. And, you know, none of these team scores or none of these individual scores from the Netherlands team are bad at all. It's 600, 500k for all four members. So that type of team consistency is really valuable on the early stage. It's just that against multiple members who can have that full combo performance from Sweden, it's not quite enough. And uh, it does end up with a pretty large score difference in Sweden's favor. So nicely done from them on the first pick. And now we move over to the first pick for the Netherlands. And I'm a little, a little interested to see what they actually go for here as a first pick. There's a couple options that they might have, but it seems like they're just going to go for the mechanics right into the speed picks. Double time two picked up for the Netherlands. Again, it is one of their stronger maps um you know they've got a very very slight edge over sweden in terms of the qualifiers you know but both their scores were very very good um you can expect the members of both these teams coming in you know they're gonna need to pull in those high scores pretty much almost fcs across the board if you can in an ideal situation because you know that your opposition regardless of which side you're on is going to be trying to do the same um, you know, I'm looking on the Leatherman side of uh, Scarovania, Vivilliam, Jackie Lamb 5, um, Kushpur as well, coming in for the DT2, whereas on the, you know, the Sweden side we've got Andros, uh, probably Reedcat definitely as well, um, Psyker should appear as well, um, for that side. Looks like they're going to go with Jaginko for that fourth member. One thing to note is that I think Saika just might not be here at the moment. I know Couch was actually pulled in as the substitute captain for this one. So it looks like it is Couch instead for now, filling in in the lobby. Um, if you're looking at how qualifiers went, it was Masta who would fill in, and there is Masta. So that's a more expected lineup. Um, but Saika was in on DT2 during qualifiers for both runs for Sweden. So this is you know, not their, potentially not their ideal roster on the map is something to keep in mind. And that might be something that the Netherlands can take advantage of here. Jaculam, Vivellium, Scaravania, and Pushper uh, is also an also, I think they're, yeah, this is their preferred roster. So this is what they went with on double time two during the qualifiers for both runs in a row. 
And one thing to note, you know, DT2 in qualifiers, a little bit lower BPM, a little bit more finger control focus. This map is just straight up speed, lots of burst control in this map, tons of consecutive three, five, and seven note bursts in this map at 248 BPM. So a much more straightforward pick than the DT2 from qualifiers, but definitely makes sense to see these same types of rosters on the you know, speediest map in the pool. We do see an early break come out from Skyravania, though, on the side of the Netherlands. Very early on, probably not going to impact too much, but there is that slight combo lead to take into account. It gives Sweden a little bit of breathing room. Um, obviously, you know, this, not having that captain might make them a little bit more nervous and more prone to unfortunate misses, but you know, they are dropping a bit of accuracy. Drigenko having a little bit of issue. He's actually swung things the other way as he does find a slider break there. It's a huge opportunity for the Netherlands here. The break from Yagako definitely opens up some doors, and this is what you want to see from the Netherlands, right? Skyravania on a good recovery, everybody else still holding the full combo, still matching those three FCs coming out of Sweden at the moment. Solid accuracy as well from the FCs on the side of the Netherlands, 99.5% from Jackie Lamb. Uh, very, very solid accuracy on the play right now. Pavilion and Kushpur as well, above that 98.5% mark for now. So really solid performance from those FC runs. And Skyravania, again, as long as he holds on to the combo, is going to be doing the job. There's an actually over-aim on one of those five-note bursts. And now, suddenly, combo lead back over to Sweden. Yagyeko not matching the break to come out of Skyravania. It's still three full combos to three, but that supporting combo is going to make all the difference, all, all things held equal. But there goes Revelium as well. Now a full combo down to the Netherlands. And again, it's just not quite going their way. They've still got two full combos, but again, it's the two versus three situation that we saw before. And Shigeko has recovered quite nicely. And it's unfortunate, but it looks like Sweden is going to get the break point here unless something tragically goes wrong for their side. That 4 million team score. It's the consistency that you want on a map like this. And then they bring home that first break point. Very it's fantastic overall, score. It's overall, yeah, fantastic score from Sweden. It's also overall a very good score from the Netherlands. It's not like this was a bad team score at all. You know, multiple full combos from Jackie and Kushper on this map. 850k from Vivellium, 650k from Skyravania. I mean, this is a really solid overall team performance. But unfortunately, when you have two teams like this in Sweden and the Netherlands who both specialize in the same types of mechanics picks, are both very good at the hard rocks mechanics and at the double time speed and aim, you end up with maps like that being picked by one side that are honestly a little bit of a toss-up between the two teams, depending on how one team performs on the day compared to the other. If one team is just performing slightly better on that type of mechanics pick that they are both very good at, then suddenly it's just an unfortunate way that the cookie crumbles, but that one team who's performing slightly on better on the day might just be able to win every pick. So. We're going to hope for the Netherlands to be able to come back, mentally reset after that pick, and go into their second pick after this, or go into this map, wanting that win and being able to you know, perform on their own picks as well. Uh, this pick for Sweden, though, definitely not one of those mechanic picks. Very technically intensive map. Yeah, again, it, I, I now understand a bit better as to why they, they picked in a Nomad 3 into Nomad 4. Um, to start with, you know, obviously with that captain not being around, you know, they don't, they probably weren't feeling as confident going into some of those, you know, more mechanic, mechanically challenging maps like Hard Rock and DT. Um, so, you know, actually the Nomad 3 and Nomad 4 makes a lot more sense now um, with these picks, you know, they're not relying on their captain to start with. Um, apparently they are around now, so we might see them in the later half of the match, but... But yeah, a very 
very interesting map. Netherlands have got some work. Well, they've got their work cut out for them on this one. Um, you know, this Swedish side on this Nomad 4 is going to be very tricky to beat. Yeah, this is this is another one of those maps where, Demarsh, you want to go back to what you said near the start of the map. It's the all-rounder players on either side that are really in for this one, right? You've got uh, Reed Cat, Silla, Andros, Blue in for Team Sweden. Uh, those players that you do find in on so many maps all throughout their tournament runs. And on the same side for the Netherlands, you've got Rebellion, Scaravania, the two-man duo, alongside Luciano and Dolter filling in the rest of the roster. And... It's the fact that this roster for Sweden is just slightly more comfortable on this through both runs in the qualifiers that gives them the confidence to pick this. We do see a couple of early slider breaks coming through for both Lou and Luciano. Alongside Mavellium, Scaravania also dropping down now here in the intro section. This map does not give you a chance to get acclimated to it at all. And the only player who can deal with that sudden shift in map style is Dolter on the side of the Netherlands. Three players, however, still holding those FCs for Sweden. Andra, Silla, and Reed Cat still going strong. The slider shapes in this map and slider ticks to follow are brutal. And that is a pattern that can just kill a team run. Look at those combos all gone for Team Sweden. All gone for Team Netherlands except for one member, Reed Cat and Dolter, on each team still holding. Yeah, so it's all going to be about team recovery. But there goes Dolter, actually. Reed Cat, the only one. Still holding the full combo, and Dolta, you can see there, was very frustrated about dropping that full combo. He's the only one who probably could have chased Recat down now. Everyone just trying to recover, but with Recat holding that full combo, unless he drops it, the Netherlands aren't going to be able to match that score back anytime soon. And this lead is already pretty massive. This is over a 350,000 score lead at this point. There's only so much gas left in the tank for these scores coming out of the Netherlands. And with that drop from Skyravania, I, I think this might even be already sealed up at this point. Unfortunately for the Netherlands, Dolter not quite able to hold on. Nobody else able to combo through that section with the massive high velocity sliders with those ticks in them that you do have to follow if you want to keep the combo. And Sweden able to take full advantage of, once again, another one of these less mechanically intensive picks, more technically challenging picks. Instead, the slider aim map here in Nomad 4 definitely working out for them. Yeah, definitely the, the all-round consistency from Sweden showing up here right when they need it. And uh, they're off to a flying start in this match. 3 nothing against the Netherlands is a very good start for them. Um, Netherlands, they've probably, they're probably going to want to want to think quite carefully about this next map pick. You know, the DT2, it didn't work out for them. In their last attempt, so they've got it. Aren't they going to stick with a DT? Or are they going to try and go and do something else? It's hard to say at this point. Yes. It definitely is. I think they probably want to stick to, you know, what they know to be solid for them, which is those mechanics. It doesn't have to be DT. It doesn't have to be hard rock. They can still go for some of these other mechanics picks that are left up. They're going to go with Nomad 2 as well. This map is interesting. There's a lot of ways that you can change how a Nomad 2 plays, anything from the stream spacing to the beats per minute uh, to the actual stream length to even, you know, some of the some Nomad 2 is adding like wonky stream shapes here and there, but uh, this one is uh, really, really focused on flow aim for a lot of this map, actually. It's only 184 BPM. The raw stamina requirement on this is not super high at this point. We are still round to 32, so it should not be that high, and that's definitely not the case. Uh, it, it's got a lot of really high spacing in this map. There are quite a few longer streams as well that are going to test the stamina a little bit, but it is... It's quite interesting to think about, you know, the mechanics don't necessarily translate into a solid score on this Nomad 2. You have to have that flow aim to back it up. Uh, but we did see both of these teams play very well 
on Nomad 2 in the qualifiers, both of them with very similar scores right around that two, two and a half million score mark. So this is another map both teams can put up really solid rosters on this. Both teams have the opportunity to outplay the other on this map, hold the combo for slightly longer and come out on top. So another little bit of a toss up pick here for the Netherlands and let's see if they can convert on it this time around. Uh, these are the types of picks that they're going to have to go for against a higher seeded team, right? If you compare qualifier results for the lower seeded team against the higher seeded team, it always, always, it almost always ends up like this. So if they can perform on the day, if they can get their heads in the game for this pick, Netherlands definitely has the chance to pull this one out. So here we go, second map pick for Netherlands. You're really hoping that they can pull something out on this one, get that first point on the board, try and turn this match around. If not, they'll leave themselves wide open for Sweden's next pick. Which they have, on their picks, they have been picking very sensibly and it's been working out for them, so... It could be all or nothing on this. No mod 2. But everyone getting off to a solid start. Accuracy slightly in favor of Netherlands as Psyka finds an early break. Early breaks for Team Sweden. Definitely not going to help the case, but this is a very long map. It's also very combo dense is one thing to take into account, right? You're only a quarter of the way into this pick and there's already 500 combo on every player with an FC. So this is a very combo dense map and Saika missing out on, you know, 200 combo is really not going to impact all that much. But 550 combo missing from Saika's play now on those jumps with those extra misses definitely is going to impact the score a bit. So. This is now looking better and better for the Netherlands as we crest the one-third mark in the map. Still four full combos for their side, three full combos as well for Team Sweden. This is by no means over yet. The Netherlands definitely still need to hold in order to secure this point, but Saika's repeated breaks definitely not helping the case for Sweden to take a break point. Luciano is the first one of the Netherlands to drop. Does, is going to halt that score progression just that little bit, but again, Psyker I don't think has warmed up properly for this match, which is why they're having just that much trouble on this Nomad 2. Again, Netherlands have got that slight core advantage as Psyker continues to struggle to build up any form of combo whatsoever. Yeah, unfortunately for Team Sweden, it just seems like Saika is really not super well prepared to be in on this pick right now. The accuracy is certainly there, but the aim is not, and that's what we were talking about before this map started, is that, you know, despite the stamina requirement on this, if your flow aim is not there, it doesn't really matter. We do see drops from both Masta and Skyravania as well. Dolter also dropping at the same time as Masta, so this is now a full combo advantage over to Team Sweden. Luciano with a good recovery for the Netherlands, but it's gonna require Pavelium to hold really well, hold very solid accuracy going into the ending here, because Andros and Reedcap being the two full combos left up for Team Sweden is very scary, but it's not gonna matter. There's not quite enough map left. Luciano and Vivellium are able to hold, and the overall team score is just slightly more consistent for the Netherlands. So they are able to take the point nicely done for themselves. They put themselves on the board. Yeah, no, they will be very chuffed getting on the board there. That was an excellent play. Vivellium coming in clutch right as his team needed him. Um, but good overall scores. I mean, you look at Skyravania and Dalta, you know, almost 800k each. Um, Luciano was the first one to break, but still, you know, 99% accuracy across the board for Netherlands. Um, absolutely solid play. Um, it was just Psyker for most of that map who was just not prepared to go in for that Nomad 2. And then those later breaks that came in for Sweden. Every trade just hurt more and more. And they just weren't able to do enough. So now we have a 
Hard Rock 2. Um, a very, I would say, potentially solid pick for Sweden once again. I'm not sure Netherlands necessarily have the, the four-man roster. They have the potential to get good scores in this, but whether they can match the the Sweden consistency on these precision type maps is a good question. Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting question how both of these teams perform on this map. Like you said, there's uh, there is the fact that you know the qualifier scores for Sweden were hovering around three million score, qualifier scores for the Netherlands hovering around two point five million team score. Uh, so you do have to favor Sweden on this pick given the qualifier scores. But one thing to take into account is that unlike maps like Nomad One, Nomad Two where you know it's basically the same type of map almost every single week in those slots uh these hard rock and hidden maps in the round of 32 map pool are not necessarily equivalent to what was tested in the qualifiers pool and qualifiers for hard rock 2 you have a map that is still cs 6.5 after hard rock cs5 base that focuses a lot on finger control and aim control and has a lot of those more technically challenging aspects to it, uh, save for the slider spam that you see in stuff like Nomad 4, actual tech picks, right? In round 32 here, what makes me wonder, we instead have a map that is almost reminiscent of DMB type maps from the early 2010s, right? Stuff like United, almost. Uh, a little bit less streamy, a little bit uh, shorter streams, but still that sort of high spacing, consistently testing both the aim and burst, has a lot of awkward angles, a lot of pattern aim in it as well. So it's almost like a, an overall consistency test, but on CS 6.5 hard rock instead. And I think that that actually bodes a little bit better for the Netherlands than it does for Sweden, right? We've talked about how both of these teams are very solid on the raw mechanics picks. Both of them have the potential to pop off on CS 6.5 and on any of these mechanics picks. So I think this is actually a little bit of a toss up pick for Sweden. I don't, I'm not necessarily certain that qualifiers is a super accurate predictor of the outcome of this map, but we're gonna have to see how it goes in the match now. Andros, Blue, Masta, and Recat in for Sweden. Luciano, Vivellium, Scaravinia, and Manivat in for the Netherlands. Early break for Manivat, Masta, and Andros on this map. Uh, both teams pulling in solid rosters for this one. You know, both of these teams have potentials to get really high scores on a map like this. And, you know, early break from Manavat, but otherwise everyone else... Oh, and Master as well, I apologize. But outside of that, everyone else still holding their full combos. Slight advantage for Netherlands in the early game. But let's see if they can hold on to it. Luciano missing on something really slow there. That's an unfortunate place to miss because I don't really think a lot of other players are missing in that section. Vivellium, Scaravania still holding the full combos. Mariva on a very good recovery. Still down about 70, 80 combo from the FC. Uh, but Andros and Mosta are not far behind on those recovery combos. In the score lead, you can see it starting to move further and further over to Team Sweden. And that break from Luciano is not going to do them any favors. However, Mosta also following it up with a break of his own. We now have two full combos to two on both sides. Blue and Recap versus Scaravania and Mavellium. And Manivat with a slight supporting combo lead over Andros. <gasps> there goes Scaravania's FC as well. Misses on those higher spacing jumps. And now it's a full combo advantage for Sweden. Yeah, they... Netherlands, they got a lucky break. Even though Luciano was breaking. There goes Andros and Manivat. It's just Vivillium against Blue and Reed Cat. And it's not a good combination to go up against if you're Vivillium. You know, on precision hard rot like this, both these two very dangerous players. You know, we're approaching the sort of outro of the map, so, you know, very little room for breaks at this point, and Sweden are going to take their next map pick. I, I think we need to talk about Reed Cat a little bit here at the end of this pick. Uh, this pick was one off the back of both him and Blue full comboing. And if you look throughout this MP link, I don't think Reed Cat has missed once in this entire match. He full comboed Nomad 2 that we just saw. He full comboed Nomad 4. He full comboed Double Time 2. He full comboed Nomad 3. He has FC'd every single map in this match so far. 
That's actually a crazy performance from a single player to be FCing. He's in on every single map. He's He's been in on every single pick and he has FC'd every map so far. Yes, it's round of 32, but by God, man, he just doesn't miss. That kind of consistency is crazy to see. And it's so awesome to see a player like Reedcat who was once, you know, a little bit pigeonholed into this high circle size hard rock role where he was the hard rock player. And that was really it. Develop his skill set out to be this type of carry performer for Team Sweden who just goes in every single map, doesn't miss even once in five maps so far during this match and really is a large part of the reason why they are so good this year. Yeah, I mean, what what can you say about Reed Cut that hasn't already been said? You know, he is he improves every single time I see him, and yeah, like you said, that consistency I don't think has or will be matched if he can keep it up throughout this this match throughout the weekend. You know, you have those players that can FC pretty much every map that they're put in for in a tournament, but you almost get nobody who can FC everything consistently, regardless of what it is. And like you said, when you bring that to a a, a good roster like Sweden, it just, it adds so much potential for their team, you know, and they're showing it in this match against the Netherlands. You know, the Netherlands, they've been putting in good scores, um, but the consistency overall from the Sweden side what is just making the difference here and interestingly enough they're not bringing in Recat on for this free mod one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, there he is. There, there he is. is. So <laughs> we do we do get to see Recat in for uh for free mod one here. This map is honestly I think a little bit similar to what we just saw. It, it's another one of those, you know, more well-rounded consistency type maps where you've got a lot of jumps, a lot of a little bit of pattern aim in this, a little bit of wide angle jumps, a little bit of comfortable jumps, a little bit of high spacing streams, a little bit of low spacing streams. And I, I think that this is, given how the CS 6.5 hard rock went, a very solid pick for the Netherlands. You know, we saw them almost contest Sweden on that CS 6.5 pick, which when you have two full combos coming out from both Green Cat and Blue on that map, that's a really solid overall team performance from the Netherlands. They were only down 300k on that last pick, which is really not a huge margin in a 4v4. So I'm excited to see how they do on this. We've got Vivellium on the hard rock, Dolter on hidden, Skyravania and Luciano going no mod on this map. Hidden for Scylla, Hard Rock for Reed Cat over on the side of Team Sweden. Couch and Blue taking no mod for this pick. Did you see an early break come out of Dolter on the side of the Netherlands? But again, very, very early break. This map is very burst and stream heavy. Uh, so there's, there's not a ton of impact from that early break. Only 150 combo down. And that extra break from Blue on the side of Team Sweden is going to swing the score lead right back on over shortly. And Luciano coming in with a break there and... Yeah, you just see it blue as well, actually, also breaking. But, um, yeah, something I've noticed with this free mod 1 is that the majority of teams have been playing this so safe. You know, only going with the bare mod requirements. No overmodding, despite there being teams who have got the rosters to put in you know, very, very good lineups with multiple mods. Um, everyone in this first round focusing on that consistency and just trying to keep it as high as possible um, for their teams. There we go, we see Vivillian with the hard rock break. That is a big drop for them. It's basically all on Skyravania at this point. And there he goes as well, over aims that burst, aims too far inwards on the curve and, and just isn't quite able to hold on. Zolter drops the combo as well and the pressure on Team Netherlands just causes the team to collapse right here. There's just not any chance, any chance that they're able to take this back. Scylla and Reedcat still holding on to the full combos, even with a miss from Couch. That is a dominant last point for Team Sweden. Almost 700k team score up on the Netherlands and that is a dominant way to close it out. Again, it's not even bad scores coming out of the Netherlands, all within 650k and 720k there for all four members, but it is a 
wipe from Team Sweden, 870k on couch, 985k on Scylla, and a million score on Reed Cap with the hard rock full combo that just make it so dominant at the end of the day for this Team Sweden. No, uh, a, a bit of a deceptive 5-1 there, you know, that was actually quite close on quite a few of those maps. Um, like I say, could have been a bit of a toss-up at times, but the overall consistency coming out from Sweden on those, you know, more well all-rounder maps, playing to their strength in this one. And they advance to the round of six, 16 quite comfortably. It's not over, of course, for the Netherlands. We will see them once again in the loser's bracket. They do get that second opportunity. Um, but again, that's the thing with tournaments. Only one can advance and one always must drop. But uh, once again, we find ourselves with a bit of a, a break in the scheduling. Um, not massive, but you know enough. Uh, we will return once again in about 20 minutes. I want to thank you once again for joining me uh, with the casting. It's always a pleasure to cast with you, my dude. It is most definitely a pleasure, Dimash. Yes, we'll be back in about 20 minutes with France versus Finland. We want to say congratulations to Sweden. Good luck to them in their matchup versus Poland next weekend in the winner's bracket. And good luck to the Netherlands in their matchup versus the Czech Republic in the loser's bracket. But for now, we're going to say our goodbyes. Thank you all for watching. We've been Dio and Dimash, and we'll see you next weekend. We'll have a couple other casters in for France versus Finland. So take care, everyone.